Sometimes we can be surrounded by the most awe-inspiring scenery and presented with epic views and compositions that seem to fall right into our laps. But this doesn't always quench my thirst, and I often end up looking for something more, something that will challenge me, and something that will make me think. So today won't be about photographing rivers and waterfalls. Today, it's all about the trees. trees just behind me this this forest and you can see the quernos over my shoulder there so if you can find compositions using these trees to to align with the mountain and, and, and line up and harmonize with the mountain then you get some fantastic compositions and that's exactly what we're doing the weather suits the scene the trees are all dead they're gnarly uh, there's no color in the in the sky there's no color in the trees a bit of yellow in the grass it's fantastic and we're having a great time. So kids in a playground walking around finding compositions because there are hundreds of these trees. And I've got a composition here, which I will just share with you in a second. I'm down here on my knees, out of the wind. And as soon as the wind drops, we'll get the shot. So I'm hunkering down by my tripod because the wind is so strong and it just actually blew my camera over and I had to catch it. So yeah, it's crazy, actually, although it does seem like it's died off now, so... I frame my composition, I'm all set, I'm just waiting for the wind to drop so I can take the image. I'm shooting at f5.6 because I really want the background to be soft and painterly. I'm focusing on the main tree here, that's my subject. And it's all about composition, it's all about doing edge patrol, making sure that nothing intrudes into the frame or is unnaturally creeping out of the frame. And it's about finding balance between this main tree, the supporting trees around it, and the mountains in the background. F5.6, focus on the tree, ISO 100, two second timer, the wind's blowing, and it was calm for one second, which allowed me to get the shot. And yeah, really happy with it, but there's so much to shoot. I'm gonna move on, see how everyone's doing, and find more compositions. So the wind's still blowing, but I want to show you guys the second tree. I actually found this tree yesterday, but the weather was terrible and didn't shoot it, but remembered it to come back to. And that is a wonderful tree just behind me there. It's shaped, it's a perfect V-shaped tree. And the V-shape mimics exactly, <laughs> uncannily, the shape of the mountain and the Cuernos just there. We've got beautiful weather in the background, as I mentioned before, gives it drama. Got a bit of side light, see that hot spot there? That's the sun coming through, just catching on the tree. Now what's so important here is composition. You know, I'm down on my knees, I'm, I'm next to a spiky bush. I've shifted left, right, up, down. It's those millimeter movements that determine where those two branches and how they interact with the mountains. What we don't want them to do is cross over the mountain ridge into the sky. It's very similar to an image I took last year, but also very different. And working with these trees in the mountains is just such a fantastic exercise. I'm shooting an F5.6 focusing on the tree, which throws the background nicely out of focus, making it like a soft painting. It's beautiful, it's a great shot. Um, I've, I'm shooting it over and over again as I'm making this video, just talking because it's so windy and I don't want any wind shake. And it's just a fantastic subject, great weather, great light, great tree. And it's been a fantastic morning. Who needs rivers and waterfalls and mountains when you have dead trees and bad weather? That's what I say. So yeah, very, very productive morning here in Patagonia. As you can see, I'm looking good and not at all windswept. But yeah, that was great. Very challenging because of the wind. Uh, but we're heading back now, back to the vans, back to hotel for uh, a bit of a rest and a bit of food and coffee. So what I was thinking of doing actually was looking at a couple of the images on the computer. And 
maybe do a bit of processing and show you a few different versions of the same image which you will have already seen in this video so uh, yeah out of the wind and into the warmth and comfort Ooh. of the office slash hotel room <laughs> And welcome to my very temporary hotel room office here in Punta Arenas. Um, I'm, on the, I'm on a very, very busy main road here, so do expect some traffic noise. And I hope, for as, I hope as well that you appreciate the lighting setup, the genius studio lighting setup, uh, which I've cobbled together over an old basket of knives and forks, a table lamp, a TV remote control, and my tripod is at all kinds of funny angles. So um, yeah, the lengths you have to go to when creating content on the road. So anyway, jumping into the video. I said just before, like two minutes ago, or even less than that, 30 seconds ago, that I wanted to come back to the office uh, hotel room and talk more about the tree images. But I don't know, I don't know. Looking at the images and looking at the video that I've just edited, I really don't think there's anything more I can add that I didn't already say in the field. But. I do think you guys are going to be wondering a little bit about the waterfall image. Uh, you see, I actually quite like that photograph, which is why I placed it at the beginning of this video. But the funny thing is, when I was on location shooting that waterfall image, that river and the mountains, I wasn't enjoying it. And I didn't get the feeling that the participants were enjoying it either, because at that location, you pretty much have one image. Um, so there's the image I captured, which was alongside another participant, Chris, and there was only room for two tripods very close to the water's edge. And then the second image is from much higher up, and it's basically a grand vista shot of the river and the mountain. There's no room for exploration or creativity, really. Um, not massively, anyway. So we, we were all itching to get into the trees. And the funny thing with this image, well, no, it's not really that funny, but the thing with this image is it's actually a composite of two photographs. Because when I shot the first image, which is this image, um, it was the blue hour, it was before sunrise, and you can see the, the shutter speed is far too long. I couldn't really get it any higher without massively compromising on quality. There's no texture or detail in the water, it's just a big smudge. So I took the image and thought, ah, oh, rubbish, I'm not enjoying this. Uh, worked with the participants, helped those guys out, walked around, trying to get the general vibe and feel of everybody. And then 20 minutes later, went back and shot this image, which has a much better foreground, but you can see the sky, there's that big, horrible, blown out area in the top left of the screen, and now the sun had risen, the light was flat, and I just wasn't feeling it. So we all agreed we wanted to pack up and move on and shoot the woodland, and that is where the photo shoot came alive. That is where everybody went from sat still, cold, shivering, waiting for the light that never happened, and generally being quite, <laughs> God, they're watching this. Oh, yeah, generally being quite miserable. Um, I was too, but I, I don't think anyone was massively enjoying the river experience, which is why I didn't film a, a piece to camera about that image or anything like that. Um, and then we went and shot the trees and everybody all of a sudden was full of energy and working compositions and getting tons of images. It was great. And it wasn't until I got back into Lightroom that I realized that actually, if I take the top half of one image and the bottom half of another image, put them together, and I actually have quite a nice photograph. So I showed it in the video, but here's the thing. It wasn't my intention to do that. That was a pure accident and something I didn't notice until, well, today when editing the images and making this video. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit conflicted, if I'm being honest, a bit conflicted. <laughs> and I'd like to know your thoughts. You know, if you don't intend to get a photograph um, and you weren't happy when out shooting uh, but you know by some accident such as what happened to me you get an image that you quite like I don't know do you still like it is there is there a connection with it I'm not sure I'm not sure how I feel about that photograph and I just really like your thoughts on capturing an image that at the time you weren't fussed about and then you really like it is that a, is that a conflict do the, I suppose the question I'm asking is do you need to have an emotional connection with your images? That's what I want to know. So please leave the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and yeah, until next time, bye for now.